Hi, this is Ed from Wright. Today we're going to talk about the difference between Twheels and Air Tires. Now the Twheels have been out for a couple years, we have more information, and in this video we're going to give you some real world visual examples of things like traction. Um, and we're also going to talk about the return on investment. In some cases, Twheels might make a lot of sense for you, in some cases they might not. And we're going to talk about the dollars and cents of if Twheels are justified for your business. So let's first talk about how a Twheel is made. Twheel has a hub, it's a metal hub like a typical wheel and it has four or five lugs for a lawnmower application. And uh, there's a several different offsets here. And there's a set of spokes. Now the spokes on the top are under tension, and so the weight of the vehicle is hanging on these upper spokes. The spokes don't have any compressive strength. They're not supposed to. They're designed to uh, relax like this. And the spokes on the side are under tension, keeping the, the wheel from becoming elliptical. And so um, this outer band is under compression. Um, the entire time. And it's, it's a controlled amount of, of compression and relaxation, so you can see here it flattens out on the bottom just a little bit, which is ideal. That's the way it's supposed to work. You can see in the cutaway here that there are cords all through the intersection of the tread in that band, giving it the appropriate amount of stiffness, and then there's a tread rubber on the outside. So that's the basics of what makes up a twheel. So now we're going to test the performance of the tires. In this case, we are going to first pull the machines opposite each other and test the traction in the forwards direction. And you see in this test that the air tire had a little bit more traction than the twheel tire. It's really not by much, but you see that once the wheel begins slipping that the uh, air tire has better grip in this scenario. Now we've seen this go both ways. We've seen on asphalt, asphalt in the rain, mud, wet grass, dry grass, um, and then machine by machine that it varies, right? So when you're working with 20 inch tires or 18 inch tires or 24 or 26 inch tires, that amount of traction can vary when you look at the available substitutes or, or cross references for air versus twheel tires. But you can see here the traction is very, very similar. Now the second thing that we did is we got up on a hill and we um, caused the machine to uh, shift to the side a little bit, forced it to slip a little bit. And you can see again here that both machines have pretty similar performance in terms of gripping on a side hill. Now the other test that we did is we took the machine and we pivoted, we made an aggressive 180 turn and we, we ripped up the grass a little bit and you can see that both machines uh, tore up the grass about a similar amount and so it, it always is true, twheels or air tires, that a good turning technique is important uh, re regardless of what you're running. Now in terms of ride comfort, uh, they're not significantly different um, they, they both have about the same amount of um, squish and flex uh, in, the, in the twheel versus the air tire. In this situation, the air tire we had 13 psi, which is a little bit on the low side. And I think if we had the air pressure higher, maybe if we had the air pressure up, up around 20, then maybe the twheel would have pulled harder than the air tire. Um, but I like around uh, 12 to 15 psi, lower pressure gives you a softer ride, the machine balances a little bit more um, over contouring ground. Now anytime you switch from twheels to air tires, um, they're never going to have the exact same ride height, and so, or if you ch even change the air pressure here, be sure that you check your deck. If, you're, if your deck setting is for three and a half inches, you want to set the front of the blade to be three and a half, and you want the back of the blade to be up about a quarter inch higher than the front of the blade. And one of the downsides to air tires is that if you change the air pressure, if you have a tire go flat, it can affect the cut adversely, but twheels are going to be very, very consistent through the life of the tire. Now, traditionally, a lot of the flat free tire options or foam fill tires out there have been known to have issues with flat spotting. So they sit over winter and they develop a lump in the tire. And um, in terms of the twheel, I've seen very, very little of that, especially once you get the machine back in use. Um, I have seen very little to no uh, flat spotting of the tire, uh, which is great. Now, let's talk about ground contact or ground pressure. And you can see here with the twheel, now both these tires are, have different nominal sizes. The twheel here was a 26 by 12 and our air tire was a 26 by 14. But if you see where the tire hit the ground here, there's a very, very similar amount of ground contact, ground contact width here. But the air tire you can see had a longer contact with the ground and a little bit more circular, kind of like a balloon pressing against the ground. And that's uh, something you get from an air tire. And the twheel has a more cylindrical contact patch with the ground 
uh, because it has a very cylindrical type of construction of how it's made, and you saw that earlier in the video. And so I think in this case, and at this air pressure, the air tire probably had slightly lower ground pressure than the twill, but again, it has a lot to do with specifically what air tire size and air tire pressure you're running compared to the twill that you're going to substitute in on that machine. So overall, you can see here that the traction and the ride are not the biggest reasons to buy a twill. They're very close in performance in those regards, and it's really more about the business case. All right, so now let's talk about the business case or the return on investment in buying twills, and that's where the benefit of twills really shines. That's really the biggest reason that you might want to look at buying twills for your mower. Now, before I get to that, let me first say that it seems that most twills last about 3,000 hours, which is pretty long. Actually, in, in a lot of cases, probably a little bit longer than the engine, the first engine might last. That also means that if you buy your machine, you run it, you know, let's say 2,000 hours and you trade it in or you sell the machine, and the fact that it has twills on it that still have some tread left on it will help um, give you a good residual versus trying to sell a machine or trade in a machine that has tires that are um, worn down and that would have to be replaced in order to get good value on that sale or would be something that someone would use to bring you down on your price. So uh, twills do, do affect your residual and they last a really long time and in many cases is longer than the, the amount of time that the first owner or you might own the machine before trading or selling it. Now for a bigger machine like this with 26 inch twills it might cost around $1,500 to equip your machine with twills on a smaller machine that might be closer to the thousand dollar range really depends on the tire size and so that is quite expensive for wheels but uh, eventually if you look at total life cycle cost which is a lot of how we design our machines and we look at um, equipment um, you have a lower net present value of buying um, twills than running the air tires so you might go through um, four or five sets of air tires over that time period, uh, which has an expense to itself. You gotta take the machine out of use to get the tires swapped out. Uh, it's just another thing to think about. And with twills, it's one and done. You put the twills on there and your, your cutter deck pitch will be perfect. You never have to think or about or pull the machine out of service. Um, and then really the very, very biggest factor in this is that every time you get a flat tire, it's always at the worst time possible. It's when you have just about finished your route. You might lose a job on that day. And, um, and so the factor here is the opportunity cost, the, the, the earnings, the missed earnings when you have a flat tire slowing you down or causing you to leave at late in the morning or uh, you know run off a job site to go get air or whatever is involved. And in the worst case scenario, and I think this is one thing that we've definitely seen. Um, if you're working as an owner operator, you can typically work fairly efficiently around a flat tire. You get, you got a, you carry a plug kit with you, maybe a small compressor, you make it work, you shift things around, you flex and you solve the problem. Um, and maybe your opportunity cost loss isn't that great, but in a fleet environment, um, a flat tire oftentimes means a whole crew uh, gets shut down. And, and there's a lot of lost time and a lot of people that are getting paid when you're not invoicing jobs. And so um, it's definitely more a case in a fleet environment, but it's true in, in, both, in both environments that the biggest thing here is the hassle and the lost revenue, the jobs that you're not invoicing when you have a flat tire. And you're gonna have a lot of flat tires over the span of about, say, 3,000 hours, which is about the life of the twill that we were talking about here. So. Um, Although those wheels might cost you about $1,500, it's quite likely that it'll save you somewhere between at, at least $1,500 and maybe even up to $3,000 if you look at the lost revenues associated with the number of flats that you get over that time period. And so that's really, really where the savings is. Now, when you look at the expense of something like this, it's important to look at your cash flow. So you could buy wheels with cash, you might finance the machine, and either way is fine, but this is a form of thinking that I think is valuable. If you were to buy twills with your mower, which if you buy twills from Wright, there's two advantages if you buy twills from us through our dealership when you buy the mower new. One is that you can finance the twills with the mower in most cases. And the second is that we add our warranty to the twills if you buy them through us. 
if you buy wheels through us, they won't be necessarily the cheapest option, but they'll be very close. But you'll get our warranty, and we'll typically go a lot farther than a component manufacturer. So if you buy wheels from us, you finance the machine, let's say that it costs you about $1,000 more um, and on, and on average, maybe a little bit more. That means that your monthly payment for that machine over four years will be probably around $20, $22 more, something like that, a month. And so if you can avoid that amount of downtime on a monthly basis of messing with this stuff, um, then obviously it's an expense worth justifying. Um, if you don't believe that you're going to save that much per month, then not. Now, the reality of whether you finance it or you don't finance it um, is beside the point. But if you look at it from that scenario, um, maybe that decision becomes clear to you. But I can definitely tell you, if you buy Twills, you're going to save money in the long haul. You're going to get it better on your residual. You're going to have uh, less lost uh, production and jobs that you could be invoicing. Those are some of the biggest factors for Twills. Traction is very comparable, but that's not necessarily the deciding point in most cases. Anyhow, I hope you, this video is helpful to you. If you got any questions about Twills, by all means, let us know. Check our website if you're interested in exactly what Twills fit up on what mowers. Hope you have a great season.